Okay, guys. So let's start with the Azure Databricks. So guys, what is Azure Databricks? When you talk about the Azure Databricks, guys, it is a cloud service. It is a cloud service, guys. Okay. It is a cloud service from Azure. So now when we talk about the Azure Databricks, so guys, the Azure Databricks is a cloud service. Okay, and this cloud service is provided by whom by the Microsoft Azure. It is provided by what guys? It is provided by the Microsoft Azure. It is provided by the Microsoft Azure. So now we can say what's that, guys? Very well. So here you have what's that? Hmm. What's that? We have it, guys. So Azure Databricks is nothing but this is a cloud service. So when we talk about the cloud service, means what guys? The service provided by the cloud technologies. The service provided by the cloud technologies is nothing but the cloud services. So now when we talk about the Azure Databricks, means what? Databricks, we are using it for Azure. That means... Databricks, we are using it for Azure. So Azure is nothing but it is the name used by the Microsoft to market their cloud services. So to market the cloud service, okay. So Azure, that is nothing but the Microsoft has given a name called what? Azure. The Microsoft has given a name called what? Azure. Now, when we talk about the Databricks, so guys, the Databricks can be used the Databricks can be used by anyone. That means it can be used by the, any network provider. That means the Databricks can be used by the AWS. Okay, the Databricks can be used by the GCP. So if you include the same, that means here, okay. If you include the same, that is whether you add AWS or whether you use uh, the GCP, etc., we can use the same for the Databricks, okay. So why exactly the Databricks we use it now? This is the second question, guys, everyone. Yeah, this is the second question. So the second question, what I can tell you here is, guys, what I can tell you here is, okay, whenever you wanted to use the Spark environment, whenever you wanted to use the Spark, okay, Spark environment, at that time, guys, whenever you wanted to use the Spark, at that time, we go with the, basically, the Databricks. So what is the Spark, basically? So Spark is nothing but here, okay, guys, a Spark cluster. Whenever you wanted to use a Spark cluster, the Spark cluster basically, everyone, the Spark cluster basically speeds up the data processing. Speeds up the data processing. That means million trillions of records will be processed very super fast. Millions and trillions of records will be processed very fast. So that is the actual, you know, you have a Databricks. So Databricks provides what's it? And that is nothing but Apache Spark cluster. It provides what's it? Apache Spark cluster. Okay. It provides the Spark cluster. So now uh, here, uh, the same way. Anyways, what is cluster and all these things? Now at this point of time, don't worry about all this because I will tell you the very basics today because this is the first demonstration session. So slowly, slowly, I will tell you what are all the things you have it in this. Okay. So Azure Databricks is a bunch of cloud. Uh, the Azure Databricks is a bunch of, or Azure Databricks is a cloud service, one of the cloud service, which is provided to perform the following type of jobs, guys. Okay. So what are those? The first one, guys, I can say here, uh, the following type of jobs you can do it. That is called as what? Data, guys, data migration. data integration data migration data integration then you have also data summarization
then you have what's that guys data visualization so these are all the tasks we can perform it guys everyone so when we talk about the azure data bricks the azure data bricks is used to perform the following that means whenever you wanted to use the cluster yet cluster technology so why do you use the Why do we use a cluster technology, guys? To make it process it very faster. To process it very faster. So millions and trillions of records can be processed very fastly. Millions and trillions of records can be processed very uh, fastly by using the, uh, that is nothing but the Spark cluster, by using the Spark cluster. Okay. So here, the same Spark cluster, we can use it by using the Azure data bricks. That means we are using the Databricks for the Azure. So using the Azure Databricks, we can perform the following jobs, you can say. What are those? The first one is called a data migration job. And uh, the second one is called as a data integration job. And the third one is called as a data summarization job. And next one you have what is as what? Data visualization job. So these are all the jobs we can perform it, guys. But whereas, now let's try to understand exactly what is this data migration will happen here. What is data integration? What is data summarization? And as well as what is data visualization? Let us try to understand the same way. So for understanding the same, let's go ahead and see here, everyone. Okay, guys, so let's uh, begin the process now. First of all, before I make you understand what is a uh, data migration, what is data integration, data summarization and data visualization. Let's try to see few things very beginning and initial things guys. So I would like to tell you, first of all, let's try to see here, what is a cloud? What is an on-premises system? Okay, guys, so let's uh, see what is an on premises system. Okay, so let's see here what is a cloud and what is an on premises system, first of all, with the help of an example, guys. So now when we talk about the cloud and what is an on-premises system, everyone, the cloud and the on-premises system with the help of an example. Guys, we all use the mobile phones or not everyone? Please tell me everyone. Do we use the mobile phones or not everyone? Guys, I want the session to be interactive. Okay. I don't want me talking aside and you people just sitting there. Okay. I want, if really you wanted to, you know, you are interested enough to, uh, okay wanted to uh, really if you are interested to uh, watch the same or you want to hear the same just interact with me what is exactly the mobile phone you have it so you guys whenever everyone do you have the mobile phones yes so whenever you have a mobile phone guys and whenever you buy a mobile phone by default you will get the mobile phone with a default memory here okay you will get the mobile phone with what's that default memory let us say here you have it 100 gb that means whenever you are buy a mobile phone, by default, the mobile phone, you will get it with the 100 GB mobile phone. Okay. Okay, guys. So just a minute.
okay guys so let's say that <coughs> everyone let's say that okay let's say that here you have a mobile phone guys here you have a mobile phone and by default the mobile phone uh has a by default you have a mobile phone here guys and this mobile phone uh, whenever you buy it by default you have a 100 gb data storage that means the capacity of the storage capacity of your mobile phone is 100 gb the storage capacity of your mobile phone is what 100 gb the storage capacity of your mobile phone is what 100 gb so when you have the 100 gb capacity for the storage that means you can store not beyond 100 am i right now suppose you have been to uh somewhere that is in some party or some function where you have clicked some photos and this photos in a in a some of the uh you know camera you have already uh used it so now guys the volume of the data is 500 gb the volume of the data is 500 gb now now tell me these 500 gb uh data can you store it into the 100 gb mobile phone tell me now guys is it possible to store everyone Yes, not possible. It's not possible to store the 500 GB data into the 100 GB inbuilt storage mobile phone, whatever you have it. So what you will do, generally we will try to expand this. That means instead of guys, instead of guys, instead of, can you see here? Instead of guys, instead of having here, what is that? Uh, 100 GB. So I'll add an SD card that's scan disk card. I'll add it. Once I add the scan disk card, let us say the scan disk card maximum size, you are getting it here as a uh, 264. Let us say not beyond that. You are not getting the uh, let us say capacity beyond that. So now, even if you use this one, that is scan disk, uh, is, that is a card, that is the SD card and along with the mobile phone. So now you will have a total of what? 364 GB. Yeah, what's it? 364 GB. Totally, yeah, what's it? 364 GB. 364 GB, guys. You have 364 GB, guys. Okay. Your total amount of what? 364 GB. Hmm. But even this is not matching your 500. That means, can you store the data? No. Not possible to store the data here, guys. Not possible to store the data. That is nothing but you cannot store the 500 GB data that is we cannot store the 500 GB data in mobile phone where you have a 364 GB is the data whereas guys whereas what is the alternative in this case either you have to go for buying a new mobile phone either you have to go for buying a new mobile phone or else the other methodology is here what guys other methodology is what here other methodology is what the other methodology is nothing but everyone the other methodology is nothing but guys everyone the other methodology is nothing but whenever you have it guys whenever you have it uh you know such kind of an issue you can go with the google drive am i right have you heard of the google drive guys please respond everyone yes so now you will try to store the data into the google drive now does the google give you the solution in fact but not fully. You can say partially it provides a solution. Guys, partially it provides a solution, guys. Not fully. How? I'll tell you. Whenever you buy the or whenever you use the Google Drive, by default, it has the memory of what is that, guys? 15 GB. That means the 15 GB is totally free. Am I right, everyone? 15 GB data is free. That means you can store the data to 15 GB. But if you store the 15 GB data means this purpose is not going to serve for us right now. Whereas, is there any alternative you require to buy? You require to buy the buy the drive. How much you can buy? No limitation, guys. How much you can buy, guys? No limitation. So if I want 500 GB, I can buy 900 GB, guys, by paying the cost. Once you paid the cost, 900 GB, guys. Once you paid the cost, guys, once you pay, paid the cost, guys, everyone, once you paid the cost for 900 GB, now you will get total okay, storage of what is that? Total storage of 900 GB. Total storage of 900 GB, guys. Okay.
So you can have the total storage of what's that, guys? Uh, nine hundred. That's something, but nine hundred GB. Now the next question is, guys. The next question is, now you can store the data up to nine hundred GB. You can store the data up to what's that, guys? Nine hundred GB. You can store the data up to the nine hundred GB here, guys. Okay. We can store the data up to nine hundred GB here. Can you see here? We can store the data up to 900 GB. That means, do you require any physical device, everyone? Yes, guys. Do you require any physical no. device? No. No. Really, we don't require any physical device. Okay. So here you can store up to 900 GB. That means, without the presence of the physical device, you can get the store this data and access the data. Access the data anywhere from the world that means irrespective of the location you can access so the first reason i can say accessing of data from any other location from any other location from any location from any location you can say that means any location of the globe that means any location from any location you can access the data. The second reason why we go with the cloud, uh, you know, storage or when why we go with this is, guys, uh, security of your data. Security of data is the responsibility of Google or network cloud provider. I'll say cloud provider. It can be Google or it can be the Amazon or it can be even what is it? You have it, guys. Uh, GCP, uh, Google Cloud Platform, uh, Amazon Web Services. It can be SAP, Oracle, anything because many of them are coming it uh, with their own uh, clouds. But now the booming product, the rulers of the market is first is Azure, second is what is that, guys? First is Azure. Uh, second is uh, AWS and third one is the GCP, where GCP is coming in the second position now. AWS is going down basically. Okay, so here, here you have the access of data from any location of the globe. Security of data is the responsibility of the cloud provider. Ah, okay, and then you have what's it? Unlimited storage. Unlimited storage. That means there is no limitation for storing the data, guys. There is no limitation for storing the data. The more data you want, the more space you will be provided. Subject to which paying the cost. So you pay the cost, the more data will be provided. Now, guys, there will be no particular restriction. And now the next one, what's that you have it? Physical device is not necessary to access the data. That means specific physical device. Specific physical, specific physical device is not needed here. So here you can say, guys. The Google Drive, whatever we have it here, guys. Everyone, the Google Drive, whatever we have it. So this Google Drive is just like your cloud. Google Drive, cloud. And now your mobile phone, whatever you have it with a limited storage that is called as a hundred GB. And uh, this one, this one is called as what, guys? Everyone, this is called as what? On premises. So now I hope everyone is clear with the limitations of on premises system. And as well as the uh, the word cloud system, cloud means what you can expand the memory. You can okay do whatever the changes you want. But here you have what all the things are restricted. It, it will be restricted up to a specific thing only. That's it, guys. Okay. So here you have what's it, uh, guys? Everyone, Google Drive and Google Drive is the cloud, and mobile phone is the on-premises system. Now, guys, as an individual, you tell me. Previously, we used to save the data in the mobile phone memory or SD card memory or else in the memory called, what is that you have it? In the memory called, what is it? SIM card memory also, we used to store the contacts. Now, are we storing the data into the, uh, you know, uh, you know, Google Drive? Please tell me now. Or should we are putting the data into the, uh, you know, the mobile storage? That means when you save any number, it will ask you, 
where you want to save it you want to save it to the uh, you know the mobile phone memory or cloud memory that is your mail id cloud memory or else it will ask you for even what is that you have it uh, sd card memory etc etc so have you ever observed this option guys please tell me now yes so basically that is the feature you have so now guys what is that you have it the same feature is this one that is nothing but whenever we try to yes guys whenever we try to move the data here from the yes guys whenever we try to move the data from your mobile phone to what is that guys everyone whenever we try to move the data from mobile phone to everyone whenever we try to move the data from the mobile phone whenever we try to move the data guys from the mobile phone whenever we try to move the data from the mobile phone to what everyone whenever we move the data from the mobile phone and to what is that you have it uh cloud that is it yes cloud network to the cloud network to the cloud network so this process is called as what guys this process is called as what data migration process this process is called as what guys everyone data migration process okay so simply in simple words i can tell you here guys you have a mobile phone there are some 100 contacts in your mobile phone i wanted to copy those contacts i wanted to move it to the google drive simple when i'm moving those 100 contacts to my uh, you know google drive guys google drive when i'm trying to move this 100 contacts to the google drive guys then this movement is called as what guys data migration that is i'm moving the data yes guys i'm moving the data from the on premises environment to the cloud environment the same is this thing here we have it nowadays as as an individual we are feeling that the data is <coughs> more safe in the uh, google drive rather than in the mobile phone or oh, rather than the mobile phone why because the mobile phone can okay it can be stolen off it can be damaged etc etc so to avoid that situation what we do it here guys we just put the data into the yes we just put the data into what is it guys into the google drive so that you will have your data for years together without any hesitation without any hesitation and whenever you require it simply you can access the data guys okay simply you can access the data guys. that's it okay so this is how this is how okay we use it here so this process is called as what data migration job next one guys what is that you have it the next job here is called as what data integration so what do you mean data integration guys let's try to understand this first okay i will not go technically guys i will go some with an example so that you will understand it very simplified way okay so guys i'll use it here what is data integration first of all what is data integration so now guys integration i'll take an example here everyone so guys here you have a can you see here everyone here you have a guys here you have a uh, here you have what's that guys everyone uh, uh reliance fresh so reliance fresh is what guys it is a supermarket which is specialized in providing the fresh vegetables fresh vegetables but now tell me how many type of vegetables will be available guys how many type of vegetables will be available into the reliance fresh can you tell me guys everyone many type of vegetables not one two you have many type of vegetables you'll be having okay we'll be having what many type of vegetables will be available here so hence guys hence guys we can say the reliance fresh is a place where guys reliance fresh is a place where you can find multiple what is it many types of vegetables many types of what is it vegetables you can find what is it many type of vegetables guys whereas let us say the first vegetable is there guys vegetable number one guys vegetable number one this is from the uh this is uh, tg that means telangana and telangana is a part of which country guys india this is from the Telangana. And here you have what's it, guys? Uh, uh, let us say Maharashtra, MH. 
and Maharashtra is a part of which country? India. So here you can say K A Karnataka. And this Karnataka is also in India. Four. Uh, we have what's it? MP. <laughs> Sorry. MP is also in India. JNK. This is also in India. Sixth one. Your words are J and K. Okay. Next one is what? UK. It is not Uttarakhand. United Kingdom, you can see. United Kingdom. Okay. UK. And uh, again, your words are USA. Eighth one, let us say here. That's it. Okay. No, guys, these are all the, uh, these are all the, can you see it? These are all what's it? The vegetables which are, okay, imported here from. That means the Reliance Fresh, guys, the Reliance Fresh here, it is there in Mumbai. That means the Reliance Fresh Mumbai, everyone, the Reliance Fresh Mumbai, everyone, the Reliance Fresh Mumbai, it's trying to sell, guys, the Reliance Fresh Mumbai, it's trying to sell, okay, guys. The Reliance Fresh Mumbai, it's trying to sell, okay, uh, the fresh vegetables which are bought from the various locations, which are bought from, what is it, guys? Various locations, which are bought from the various locations, which are bought from the various locations, which are bought from the various locations, guys, okay? So, which are bought from the various locations under one roof, under one roof. That means from Telangana, Okay, from Telangana, they bought it, uh, you know, some vegetable. From Maharashtra, they bought another vegetable. Okay, that is from Maharashtra, means any district of Maharashtra. Okay, from Karnataka, they bought it one. From Madhya Pradesh, they bought it one. From JNK, they bought it. And again, from the United Kingdom, they bought some. And from the United States of America, they bought some vegetables. And they bought it from Malaysia as well. That means... The Reliance Fresh is worried to, guys, everyone. The Reliance Fresh is worried to, everyone. The Reliance Fresh is worried to provide the consumers fresh vegetables. Okay, where from any part of the world. That means uh, the main motive of the Reliance Fresh here is that, guys, everyone. The main motive of the Reliance Fresh here is that to provide the fresh vegetables uh, fresh vegetables to the consumers where okay irrespective of the location from where they import it that means the customer should be able to consume this that means for the facilitating for what's that guys facilitating the consumers for facilitating the consumers the reliance fresh has imported the uh, you know these vegetables from various locations these vegetables from the various locations these vegetables from the various locations these vegetables from the various locations okay guys these vegetables from the various locations that's it guys okay these vegetables from the various locations okay and made it available for use in yes mumbai so now you have guys now tell me now uh, now guys the next question is here can you see this is cultivated and cropped in telangana this is cultivated and cropped in Maharashtra. This is cultivated and cropped in Karnataka. This is cultivated and cropped in Madhya Pradesh. And this is cultivated and cropped in Jammu and Kashmir. And this is in the United Kingdom. And this is in the USA and Malaysia. But bought for the consumers. Okay. Bought for the consumers who are available in Mumbai right now. That means as you have the store in Mumbai, so the Mumbai cars only. Uh, you know, uh, get these particular vegetables. Okay. But now, guys, tell me. Now, everyone. Now. Okay. So now, can you say that it is a process of collecting the vegetables from across the globe, guys?
can you say is this a process of collecting the vegetables from across the globe or not everyone yes guys <clears throat> the reliance fresh does the process of guys the reliance fresh does the process of collection of the vegetables across the globe from across the globe it does am i right from across the globe it does that means here under one roof guys under one roof under one roof guys under one roof guys everyone under one roof okay under one roof the same is provided under one roof the same is provided by the reliance specials whereas this process is called as the process of what guys integration this process is called as what the process of what integration okay and now guys here can you see integration of what vegetables from various locations they bought it and kept it at a place hence it is called as what integration of guys integration of vegetables so hence if your same vegetables are replaced with the data that means data is kept in telangana get data is kept in maharashtra data is kept in karnataka madhya pradesh jammu and kashmir united kingdom united states of america and malaysia when the data is kept at the various locations guys once the data is kept at the various locations okay once the data is kept at the everyone once the data is kept at the various locations guys once the data is kept at the various locations okay once the data is kept at the various locations everyone once the data is kept at the various locations so to get the data under one roof that is in mumbai i have to get the data so hence when i apply the same on the data it is called as what integration it is called as the process of what data integration it is called as the process of what guys data integration this process is called as what guys everyone this is called as what data integration that means we integrate the data here from various locations of the world okay so everyone is clear with the concept guys so now uh, everyone i hope everyone is clear with the first one what is that you have it the first one what is that you have it guys the first one is called as what data migration i think clear for you and data integration is also clear for you i hope so everyone am i right hello yes guys oh, yes yes and we have a data summarization now now guys summarization process let us uh, try to so can we call it plus data integration as well ha huh? can we call come again please can we we call etl as data integration also then like stack transform load as data integration ah uh, but actually the etl prior to the etl you will have this integration but you will have that feature in that as well you will have that feature as well in that okay okay so in etl also we will be collecting data from different sources yes, yes, and yes, then yes, load yes. it to one place right yes yes okay okay so now anyways guys i'm just beginning this uh, further process what is the next thing you have it guys everyone the next one is here like this okay i'm just using it here guys everyone that's it guys okay so the next one after this yes python is mandatory for this course okay now guys anyways uh, the next one what's that you have it data integration is done here and data migration is done so what is data summarization now let's try to see this data summarization here guys everyone i'll use the same example here i'll use the same example here guys everyone can you see here i'm using the same example wherein i'm using what's that the same vegetables are bought from the various locations now guys my current situation demand is that my situation demand is that i wanted to cook a veg curry cook a veg curry when i wanted to cook this veg curry guys i have been to the reliance fresh to buy the vegetables tell me now for cooking this veg curry am i going to buy all the vegetables or any few of the vegetables guys yes you have 100 vegetables like this but are you going to buy all the 100 vegetables or only those vegetables 
which is required for our process. Please tell me, guys, everyone. Required uh, vegetables. Which is required. So let us say we bought some first vegetable number one, vegetable number three, vegetable number six. Okay, vegetable number seven. That's it. That means I bought these vegetables. One, three, six, seven is the vegetables I bought. Okay. Now, can I say this process, guys? As can I say this process as was that selection of vegetables? Selection of vegetables, guys. In fact, we can say this one as a process of what? Selection of vegetables. Now, once the vegetable selection is done, you have bought them home. Can you start eating them as it is, guys? No, because as a human, we don't eat the raw food. Am I right? As a human, we don't eat the raw food. So what you will do? We'll cook. So hence, okay, uh, what happens here? Selection of vegetables is done, guys. Can you see it? Selection of vegetables is done. Then what happens here? Selection of vegetables. Selection of vegetables is done. And uh, out of which I'm choosing the one, three, six, seven. And then you have what's that? Once you have made them build, got them home. Are you going to start the eating process? No. We have to perform some process first of all. What is that? You will have to use the cleaning process. Cleaning of vegetables. Then what is it? Cutting of vegetables. Cleaning, cutting. Cleaning, cutting. And then you what is it? Cooking. So now tell me, what is this we are doing it? We are changing the raw form vegetables to the cooked form. That means, are we changing the form of the vegetables, guys? In fact, we are changing the form of the vegetables. That means, the vegetable forms, I am changing it. Okay. The vegetable, the vegetable forms, I'm changing it. Yes, guys, the vegetable forms, I'm changing it. From, what is that? The vegetable, form of the vegetables, I'm changing it. Yes, guys, the form of the vegetables, I'm changing it, guys. Okay, uh, the form of the vegetable, I'm changing it, guys. The form of the vegetables, I'm changing it. From the raw form to the cooked form. From the raw form to the cooked form. So, and once the cooking is done, what is that we do? We eat it. So, now, guys, this process, I'm, I'm saying it as a selection of vegetables. And this process, can I say it as a transformation of vegetables, guys? Transformation of veggies. From transformation of veggies, that is from the raw to the cooked form. And once the cooking is done, what you will do? Eating. So eating, can I say it is a loading process, guys? Yes, in fact, we can say it as a loading process as well, guys. Okay. We can say it as what loading process as well. That means cooking is okay. Cooking is done. Finally, you will eat it. Eat it. That means if the same process we apply it on the data, guys. If you apply same process, we apply it on data. So now, guys, that means what we'll do from the bunch of records, we'll pick up the data. So here it is called as what instead of selection of vegetables, I can say, yes, guys, extraction. Of data. Then once the data extraction is done, then you have what's it, guys? Transformation of data. Loading of data. That means, can you see here, guys? Extraction of data, transformation of data, and as well as the loading of the data. Extraction of data, transformation of the data, and as well as the loading of the data. So, guys, these are all the things we have it. Extraction of data, transformation of data, and loading of the data. So, hence, we can call this one as what is it, guys? Yes, we can call this one as what? ETL. We can represent it as what, guys? ETL. This is the E. This is the T. This is the L, guys. ETL, that is called as what? Extraction, transformation, and what is it, guys? Loading is the process. Whereas, nowadays, you also have what is it, guys? ELT. E, 
extract and load it first. Later, extract and load it first, then later transform. That's it, guys. Later transform the same things. Okay. ELT or ETL. So both performs the same job. Okay. But in the development time, this is a latest technique. We have a ELT and the ETL is the olden technique. Okay. Since the on-premise system, we are using the same here. Okay, guys. So whereas this process using of ETL is called as a process of what? Data summarization. Everyone. It is called as a process of what? Data summarization. Then apart from this, we have one more thing. What is it, guys? Uh, data migration is done. Moving the data, data integration is done. Gathering the data, data summarization is done. Now the next one is data visualization. So what do you mean by data visualization? We use the data visualization. Let's try to see the same, guys. Okay. Data visualization. What's it? We have it. Data visualization. Data visualization. We have what is it, guys? Data visualization. We have what is it, guys? Data visualization. We have what is that? Data visualization. Okay. We have the data visualization. That's it. Now, visualization is nothing but suppose here you have a supermarket information is here. Now, the Reliance Fresh, now let's say the Reliance Fresh supermarket information is here. Now, the Reliance Fresh supermarket authorities wanted to. Uh, guys wanted to know some information. What is that information? They wanted to know some information or they wanted to launch guys. They wanted to launch some guys. Uh, they wanted to log guys. They wanted to launch here. Everyone. They wanted to launch here. They wanted to launch here. Everybody. They wanted to launch here guys. They wanted to launch here. Hmm? They wanted to launch a discount offer. But before finding out the discount offer, everyone, okay, so before finding out the discount offer, okay, uh, before finding out the discount offer, guys, uh, before finding out the discount offer, now they wanted to, uh, uh, there is nothing but see the, monitor the sales. They want to monitor the sales. That means, let us say here, on the 31st of 07, 2024, you have the data. So you let us see the sales amount here is the one lakh. And on 30th, 07, 2024, here you have said one lakh 20,000. That's it. Now see here, guys, everyone, 30th and 31st, 31st and 30th, two days data sales is there. Based on the sales, they wanted to decide on which day the discount offer should be launched to have maximum sales. So likewise, guys, only two days data, you can say 30th day sales is more, guys, 30th day, guys, everyone, uh, 30th day sales is more than the 31st day. Yeah, what's that, guys, everyone? 30th day sales, guys. 30th day sales is more than the, yes, is more than the 31st day. That means you have a 30th day sales is 12 lakhs. Where the 31st day is what? You have the sales of only 1 lakh on this day. Getting my point? So now, guys, you can rule it out and tell me with your naked eyes just you, by seeing the data. Why? Because you have only two rows. Likewise, likewise, if five years day-wise sales data is given, how many? If five years day-wise sales data is given to you and you have to take a judgment. So can you tell me by just by looking into the data or some technological support is needed, guys? Everyone, tell me now. Is there any, you can see, check and tell me or if you five years data is given to you, sales data like this, so you can tell directly or you require some technological support, guys. Please tell me, everyone. Hello? We can tell directly. How you can do directly? 
technology support is required. Yes. See, I two records is there. No problem. We can say if instead of two records, I have something like this, guys. Everyone, I have something like this. I have something like this. Many records are there. Let us say some. Okay, day wise is there for. Uh, okay, day wise is there for. Okay, how many years? Let us say for. Uh, five years data is there. How many years? Five years data is there like this. Now, guys, you will have to everyone. Now you will have to take a decision, everyone. Now you will have to take a decision, guys. Now you will have to take a decision. Which day sales is more, and what is the buying pattern? That means whether day wise the pattern is coming up or coming down. You have to review the five years data is there. Now tell me, this is the date of sales, everyone. This is the date of sales, and this is the sales net sales amount. So now, guys, unknowingly, what you're doing here? Unknowingly, guys, you are performing the analysis. Am I right or not? Comparing one situation with the another situation to take a decision. So what is the decision? The decision the Reliance Fresh owner will take to introduce a discount offer. But to introduce the discount offer, he requires the report. That is nothing but sales report for the past of six months. So now this is the data. So as this is a very huge data, guys, okay, as this is a very huge data, let us consider it. So you cannot do it manually. Am I right? We require a technological support. So for that, we use the process. And now, guys, we require to compare one record with the another record now. So whenever you want to compare one record with the another record, this is called as a process of what? Analysis of data. It is called as what? Analysis of data. And in the same way, suppose, guys, everyone, in the same way, suppose everyone, Okay, so at the same time, guys, analysis of data is done here. So the another method is that the another method is that, guys. Uh, now, guys, they wanted to know even the future sales. That means, can you see here? And instead of this, they wanted to know what is the, uh, let us say, 1st August 08, 2024. Sales is question mark. I don't know. This is the running data. You can't see the sales now. And now, guys, 0 to 08-2024. And the sales is what? Question mark. Now, you have to give some value. So this is called as what? Future predictions. Am I right, everyone? These are called as what? Future predictions. Am I right, everyone? These are called as what? Future predictions. That yes. is called as what? Guys, future predictions. So now here you have to make the future predictions as well as that means current analysis. You have to do it. Once the analysis is done, comparative study is taken off. Based on that, you have to even predict the future here. So these are the different type of analysis we have. It. So now you can say what? Comparative analysis and future analysis. Future analysis means what? You will have to use the uh, general linear model or the ANOVA, which uh, is nothing but comparative difference between uh, you know, two different uh, values. Okay. So all this is done here. That's some math mathematical operation is done. Okay. So all these, that is statistical operation, you can say, not exactly the mathematics. Okay. So that is done here. So we write it here as it is. Okay. So once you have to perform such kind of data on a very massive amount of data, this whole process that is finding out the net sales amount and comparing the current sales with that coming day sales, all this is nothing but called as what data visualization process. So now here in the Azure Databricks, guys, we have the following. What is that? Using the Azure Databricks, guys, we can perform from the data migration to the data visualization. That is called as the whole end-to-end -end process is covered here. The whole end-to-end -end process is covered here. That's it, guys. Okay. The whole end-to-end -end process is covered here. Okay. The whole end-to-end -end process is covered here. Okay. The whole end-to-end -end process is covered here, okay, as a part of this course. And the duration is, uh, guys, here you have it, okay, uh, uh, that is the 60 hours, or we can say. The duration is 60 hours, okay. And um, the timings is standard, it is 9 o'clock, guys. 
nine o'clock to ten o'clock would be the standard timings for this course. Okay, and uh, how can you get the contents voucher? You can go to the what is it? Durga Soft Online. Durga Soft Online. Dot com. Okay, you can just check it here. You can get the contents voucher. Okay, if uh, this content voucher, and apart from this, you can also find my number. This is my number, guys. Direct number it is. You can just call me in case of any doubt you have it. Okay. And the duration of the class will be one hour every day. And the standard timing is 9 to 10 o'clock, guys. Okay. So from tomorrow onwards, we'll begin the session, guys. So any other uh, thing you require, please let me know, guys. Please, everyone. Any prerequisites is required, sir? Prerequisites is nothing but you require the Python coding, okay? You require the Python coding, guys. 